Assalamu alaikum guys, so I stumbled upon this video by Sunni Defense, it was a refutation video to this famous uh, preacher, a Rafidi preacher by the name of Ammar Nakhshawani. So in this video, the Dajjal Nakhshawani or the Majus Nakhshawani or the Taqiyya, the Taqiyya doer or the son of Taqiyya Nakhshawani shows his lack of knowledge of the Quran and um, his stupid audience eat every fiction and legend that comes out of his mouth all right uh, take a look at this video and you will know what i mean by this children previous to imam ali abbas the uncle of rasulallah and yazid bin ka'na both narrate this incident and the incident i will come to the references of the incident in a minute abbas the uncle of rasulallah says i was sitting down by the kaaba and next to me was Yazid bin Qa'nab and a few of the ancestors or the descendants of Abdul Uzza, the clan of Abdul Uzza. We were sitting down and we saw Fatima bint Asad, the wife of Abu Talib. We knew that she was pregnant and it clearly was the last days of her pregnancy. Yes. He says that we saw her walking towards the Kaaba, Bab al-Mustajar of the Kaaba. She went towards that section. He says we saw her walking towards there. Then all of a sudden, she raised her hands and recited a dua. Yes? They said, we remember the dua word by word. Yes? She said, oh Allah, I believe in all your prophets. And I believe in all the scriptures that were sent down with those prophets. And I affirm the covenant that you made with Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. The builder of this Kaaba. Yes? So, Ya Allah, I ask you in the name of Ibrahim and in the name of the covenant that you made with him and in the name of the one in my womb, make, my, the, make the pangs of pregnancy become easier for me. Listen to her words. These words need to be examined. Now, when was Ali radiallahu anha born? He was born at the year 601 and when the Prophet peace be upon him received revelation. The Prophet peace be upon him received revelation at the uh, year 610. So there's a gap of nine years between the birth of Ali radiallahu an and the revelation that was received uh, uh, by the Prophet peace be upon him. Now the question arises is that how did a mushrik, you know, the Meccans at that time were mushriks, right? Uh, except for the Prophet, peace be upon him, or some other, you know, Jews and Christians. The Meccans were basically mushriks. And Fatima bin, As bin Tasset, you know, at that time uh, was a mushrik, technically. Then um, how did she know about the covenant or the prophets of God? You know, how did she know about the covenant that was uh, actually like uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made with Ibrahim alayhi salam? Well, the answer to that is simple. Uh, through the revelation of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Yet the Prophet, peace be upon him, received no revelation at the, at the birth of Ali radiallahu an. Right? He received revelation, you know, after nine years. Nine years after the birth of Ali radiallahu an. So now, where where did this story come from? Well, this story is actually like kind of like a mere fiction made by Nakhshawani, and uh, his stupid audience, you know, his, his Don Quixote audience, was kind of like buying it and accepting it, and uh, they were not fact checking him. You know, if you fact check him, and you know, in historical accounts, he will actually like uh, came short or come short. Now. Um, Let's go to the other part. Let's see what he says. First, so when she said that, Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib says, because he's her brother-in-law, of course, he knows her very well. He says that as soon as she said that, we saw the Kaaba open up for her. The walls of the Kaaba opened up and she entered upon the Kaaba. Said when she entered upon the Kaaba, those walls then closed. I said, me and the others and the whole of Mecca suddenly saw this. All of us came, and when we came, we tried to open, nothing would open. We tried to even smash the door of the Kaaba, yes? They even got rocks to try and smash the door, it wouldn't open. They got keys to unlock the door of the Kaaba. There was a key to the Kaaba, which the custodians of the Kaaba had. They bought the key, the key wouldn't help open. For three days, he says, Mecca was in a frenzy. 
that how did this woman enter the Kaaba? She's pregnant. And now we're trying to open the Kaaba. There is absolutely no way of opening the Kaaba. So he says that for three days, Mecca was in a frenzy until on the fourth day, while Mecca was in a frenzy and everyone was waiting to see what happened, on the fourth day, that area where she entered opened up. And Fatima bint Asad emerged with a baby in her hand. And she said, oh people, listen to her words. She said, oh people, Allah has given me and made me greater than Asiya bint Muzahim and Maryam, daughter of Imran. Okay, now let's see where did he get his story from. So look at the chapter uh, 3 of the Quran, verse 42. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Wa iz qalat al-malaika tu ya Maryam wa inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa'i al-alamin And mention when the angel said O Mary indeed Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the woman of the words And as the angel said O Maryam Mary, surely Allah has elected you and purified you and has elected you over the woman of the words. Now let's read it in the holy language of the Rafidis, right? I.e. Farsi. و با یاد آورید هنگامی را که فرشتگان گفتند ای مریم خداوند تو را برگزیده و پاک ساخته و تو را بر زنان و جهان برتری داده است. Now look at the key word here in Arabic. It says Alamin, right? The word Alamin means words, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Maryam salam over the woman of the words. There's no one like her. She's above all the women of the words. That's how it is. But this Rafid, he cannot accept that. And so he kind of like distorted the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, put it on another pr perspective to suit his own cheap agenda. That's how he works, how he operates. How, that's how all these rafidis, you know, in big in social media works. Understood. And where where is this referenced? Where? Mind in some of the most famous works of history. Al Mustadrak. Because someone turned around and said, "Well, this isn't in Bukhari and Muslim." Aye, where? where? Yes. Al someone said it's not in Bukhari and Muslim. Firstly, Habibi, Bukhari and Muslim is not a 900 million billion page book of um, Islam. Uh. Bukhari and Muslim has picked out certain traditions which they believed were reliable. Not everything that someone believes in has to be in Bukhari and Muslim. I'll give you an example. Our brothers from Ahl Sunnah, all of them believe in a hadith. I leave behind for you the Quran and my Sunnah. Correct or no? In Nairobi on Friday or in Mombasa on Friday or anywhere in East Africa on Friday, every khatib of Salat al-Jum'ah will say, Rasulullah said, I leave behind for you Quran and my Sunnah. Quran and my Sunnah, correct? You never hear them say Quran and Ahlul Bayt, true? Isn't it always Quran and my Sunnah? Say, where is it? Where's the hadith? Bukhari? No. Muslim? No. Okay, I'm, Muslim I'm, 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 I'm not Bukhari. watching any of this. I'm, I'm done. Uh, hadith is not in Mustadrak. Assalamu alaikum.